Coming up on Up at Noon, there are three new Pokemon, starter Pokemon. Let's make fun of them. X-Men Apocalypse is getting reviews, I guess, and China has a new video game console that looks very familiar. All that and more right now on Up at Noon Live. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Up at Noon Live. This is live? Yeah, this is live, which oh, sucks dang. sometimes. It really sucks. Oh, no, we're fine. In case you're just tuning in for the first time in the history of ever, uh, when we show images on the screen, such as this one, of our fine sponsor, Dead Island Definitive Collection. Is it working? Is it going to work? Is my computer plugged in? Yeah, look, our names. Does it show? No, that, I didn't do that. Oh, but when dang. we show like an image on the screen, there, that's it. That comes from my computer. I have like a VLC open. I got a playlist there. Dead Island Definitive Collection, coming to PS4, Xbox One. Uh, it, is, it is the zombies, but now they're prettier. Because they put on they put on makeup. They, they put little bits of makeup they still on. Still very scary to me. Yeah, they're very ill. Mm -hmm. They've got things wrong with them. Um, yeah, up at noon live. This is a show we do live, and it's terrifying. It's utterly terrifying. You're oh, filling no. in for Brian Altano. This is yeah. my sleeve, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, we're coming in hot. That's kind of our slogan here, because we are bad at planning ahead. Because we have fevers. Yes, fevers for doing a good job sometimes. Uh, if you're watching us, thank you. And if you're not. Please do on the following platforms. <laughs> IGN.com, <laughs> PS4, Xbox One, Roku, Apple TV, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. All of these things. We're all on there. It's, it's all over the place. Uh, if you'd like to ask us questions, sometimes we answer them. We do that through Twitter using the hashtag up at noon. Oh, or chat with us in the comments on the various things that... What are you looking at there? I don't know. It was a girl. Don't worry. Oh, it's worry. a picture of Cher from the 70s wearing a cool hat. <laughs> nice. I love the internet. You can see all kinds of stuff on there, such as pictures of things. <laughs> So one thing that happened last night, Assassin's Creed movie got its first trailer. Yeah. Uh, I hear it's going to be a cinematic experience with photorealistic graphics. Should we take a look at this? Or what do you think? Yeah. Uh, can we put it on? Are we going to get yeah, sued? Are we going to show a little bit of it? We're going to get sued, are we? Uh, I, Kanye's not known for being very litigious. Well, just don't put the sound on then. Um, um, yeah, so this is directed by, do you know his name? Uh, no, it's a dude who directed uh, Macbeth. Yeah. Let me look that up. Uh, uh, but if you haven't seen Macbeth, the most recent uh, retelling, uh, I think his name's Justin Kurzel. It is the most badass Shakespeare movie yeah. ever. And it's absolutely gorgeous. So the same director and Macbeth was starring Michael Fassbender and Marion Cotillier. So the, the trio sort of got the band back together and uh, made, according, I mean, this trailer, in my opinion, is the best video game movie trailer ever. Um, I think, Abstergo stuff aside, like I'm not crazy about the Abstergo stuff in Assassin's Creed proper, but the second they get to the Spanish Inquisition, everything looks so incredibly yeah. gorgeous. I would say they almost screwed up by starting off with all the sci-fi stuff. Yeah. Because that doesn't seem like the strong suit. This. Yeah, this look at this. This is, is Assassin's incredible. Creed. Like, this yeah. is Assassin's Creed right uh, here. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm really into it. Yeah. Uh, all this I don't looks super know, badass. It looks gorgeous. I don't know how it's going to do. No. Because it's coming out a week after Star Wars Rogue One. Yeah, that's a that's a bad move. I could see it being moved either up. I mean, up. I don't think it's going to miss this year, but I yeah. can see it moving up. But look at this. This looks incredible. Yeah, this is like this easily is, the best looking video game movie. Yeah. Just just in terms of cinematography and, and what, what they've shown off. Like, yeah. video game movies are regularly trash. Yeah. Like they, they frequently suck. And then, meanwhile, we'll get incredible live action or CG cinematic trailers for yeah. games that just, you know, they're like a three minute movie that's just beautiful. But this is like, this is killer. So, so that's one thing that I think is interesting is that that big, basically he's cosplaying as GLaDOS there. I mean, it's sort of how they're, <laughs> how they're dealing with the uh, animus stuff is instead of just showing a dude sleeping in a bed, it's sort of going to be a more active uh, approach to the thing. Uh, one of the things which, I don't know if you caught in that, also, that leap of faith. Yeah. Crazy! Apparently, it's a real thing. Which is that man's that? probably man, that man probably died a lot. That sucks. No, he probably didn't die. die. Uh, so obviously, uh, one of the things which you may have not gotten from that trailer, because I don't know if we have the sound on, uh, is that Kanye was playing in the background, and a warm coat on the on Twitch chat says, "Trailer looks good, but why the Kanye track?" That seems like kind of a really uh, like they're just maybe they're just gilding a lily there, you mm -hmm. know? Like maybe they could have just had like a nice a nice instrumental noise. So people have, re re people have recut it with, like, I think Ezio's team, uh, theme from AC2. And it mm -hmm. totally fits and totally works well. Uh, but as Kanye's biggest fan in the world, I say put Kanye on every trailer. Um, I don't like Kanye that much. I like Riff Raff. I, think I like that, Riff Raff. I think that Tiptoeing in my Jordans should be the Assassin's Creed theme song <laughs> because that's what Ezio does. He does tiptoeing in his Jordans. Uh, I, I don't think those were Jordans. I think those were, like, uh, boots. You know, where, you know where they are, right? Jo Jordan. They're in the Middle East. 
No, the Crusades. Was, it was, no, that was the... They're in no, the Middle East. It's the first the Crusade. the Spanish Inquisition. It's Spain. Modern day Jordan. That's, Tiptoeing in literal Jordan. It's just, it's just yeah. Spain. Yep. <laughs> it's not even where nope. he is. It's a true story. <laughs> not a true story. Yep. Peach Panther. All right, everybody. Uh, one thing that happens, speaking of Peach Panthers, I guess, there are new Pokemon. They keep, they keep coming out. You got to catch them all, but there's nothing to stop them. They keep going. There's more of them. Every time you think you got them, there are more, more of them. So it's an obligation. You want to be a master? You got to stay up, stay up to, uh, with all of, of the animals. Luckily, we have a Pokemon master in the house, <laughs> Callie Plaguey. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. Thanks for having me back. How about them? Pokemon. The Pokemon. There's a. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they announced the, the starter Pokemon for Sun and Moon. We have them right here. Let's take a look. Yeah. I don't know how I feel. Uh, it's that time of it's the time of the year. Are your microphones not on? No, uh, just we're roll gonna, through. We're gonna, it. We're gonna pretend. Wait, that are those us? Wrong. Are those yep. us? Oh, look at that! I'm the owl. I win. Well, Sucks to be you, Marty. You're no. that stupid yeah. clown seal. Okay, so wait, what's the deal? Let's go back to the three of these. I want to see who who are these. Uh, Callie, can yes. you tell us about these three? So there's the nice little owl. His name is Rowlet, and he has a little bow tie. He's my favorite one. Okay, he's cute. he's undoubtedly the best one, and he won our poll on IGN for like who you're gonna pick. And he's grass flying, which is pretty cool. The the one on the right there is uh, Litten, and he's been the subject of many a and it's Litten joke. It's yeah, lit fam. On, yeah. on Twitter. Is, is uh, he is he straight edge? He he looks. Why would he be straight edge? Oh, because the looks stockings or sort of like he came out of the wrong game. Like he's not supposed to be in this one. Yeah, that's what all you know? Pokemon. He looks look like, like he was in a My <laughs> Chemical Romance mobile game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What about yeah, this? What bit. about this? Um, um, this godless abomination that is this ass clown seal. That's my favorite. <laughs> right. So the the, the third one this is flippered idiot here. His who I like to call sad clown seal dog. <laughs> oh, his real name is Poplio, and he's supposed Poplio? to be. Yeah, he's supposed to be like a. That sounds like an Italian ripoff of Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> what? All of the the only one I think who's supposed to be there is Rowlet. Poplio is kind of like his nose is supposed to be a balloon, like water balloon kind of mm, kind of deal. That's gross. And he's like everyone's least favorite, and no. like everyone hates there's him. There's there's a strong hashtag Poplio uh, campaign yeah, in, the, in the YouTube chat. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, so here's the thing with starter Pokemon is that they're always there's always going to be a discussion taking place right off the bat about which one you think is the coolest. Right. And then it's a complete bait and switch because they'll wind up like the one you think is the coolest has the dumbest final evolution. Uh, yeah, like the magic fox from X and Y. Thank like you. this weird fox with a dumb yes. stick. I yeah. wasn't into Fennekin from day one. I was Team Chespin all the way. Yeah. Uh, if Froakie wasn't a water type, I would wow. wish that he would be drowned. You sure uh, do know your Pokemon starters. No, those were Hunger Games uh, contestants. Yes. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon is kind of like the Hunger Games if you I stop and think about yeah. it. But don't stop and think about it. First, we're going to do something. Uh, there's a game that some people like to play. It's a game of thought. And I'm trying to think how we're going to describe it. Uh, basically, you've got these three characters here. And we're going to pick which ones we would marry, mm -hmm. which ones we would kill, and which ones we would... Kiss. Romance. Romance. Rama. Make love with. Mm -hmm. Did you listen to Beyond this week? No. Okay, because you shouldn't be talking about r romance and animals at all. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, apparently they said I wasn't on my usual PlayStation podcast because I was at court for <laughs> sexually doing stuff with an animal. Didn't happen. I had jury duty. Please. So anyway, so. on that note, we've got these three animals. you got to pick one. That you're gonna you're gonna just brutally murder. You got mm -hmm. gonna pick one. You're gonna th get lost in the throes of passion with, and then the <laughs> other one that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with, for better or for worse. Right. So I have kind of a controversial pick. So okay. I think I would I would pity smooch Poplia, like I would I would just throw him throw him a bone, kind of like like a. <laughs> You know, it's okay. You're like, yeah. hey, it's okay. Not we've everybody all, hates you. We've all made mistakes. I like Poplio. He's he's okay. He's gonna make an then, incredible husband. You know, obviously, I'd marry I'd marry Doctor Who right there. Yeah. Get it? Is <laughs> now. Um, and then I I would um, murder the dumb cat. Yes. Yeah. We we have enough cat Pokemon. Let's be honest. There's also, like a thousand. Also, if you don't murder the cat, the cat will murder you. So it's sort of survival. It's of the sort of a preemptive strike. Yeah. You know what? That seems pretty good. I'm gonna go a little bit obvious here. Mm -hmm. I would brutally murder that seal. I would just, <laughs> I would club that seal just to death. Oh, um, he's so cute. I Look would at, probably oh, no. go find a car just to run it over with. Why? But he's a seal. It he's sucks. in the water. I don't care. We'd get it up on the land or something. And then I'd do some weird, weird stuff with that owl. <laughs> I'd do some weird romantic things. And then I would settle it down with that cat because I think having that, having that spark, having that, that fire, 
of a good relationship. Mm -hmm. I think the cat would keep things interesting. Yeah, and the owl can turn its head 180 degrees. So that's I think cool. the Wait, owl. No, okay, that is creepy. <laughs> if you're, <laughs> if you're okay. making the sweet love with that owl, and yeah. all of a sudden his head does the poltergeist scale. Know. What if you're doing stuff with the owl and it just barfs up a mouse nope, skeleton? Nope, nope. That nope. happens. My, uh, so, owls do that all the don't time. Don't kink shave. Okay. <laughs> So here's here's my issue with the Sorry. owl. The owl, I'm sure, ma would make a great uh, a great partner. Mm. But let's be realistic. The owl looks like it's already settled down and let itself go. This this owl looks retired. This <laughs> owl is wearing a cardigan Just and a bow tie, which I know works for you. No offense. <laughs> I don't wear bow ties. You're not wearing a cardigan right now. You wear bow ties Zach to like wouldn't weddings let and me. stuff. Oh yeah. But like. I feel like the owl's just going to be completely like unexciting. You're going to get so bored, and you're going to call up your old friend the cat and be like, "Hey, what are you doing later?" Wow. Yeah, you're going to go on that tall grass looking for some trouble. Marty, what about you? Which of these uh, fake animals do you want to do stuff with? Oh, I definitely. I want to settle down with. Uh, I want to settle down with the seal. I feel like he's going to raise my children well. Uh, mm. I think I'd probably make it's definitely some, settling. I'm gonna make the sweet love to the cat because it seems like he's uh, got some cool moves. And I'm, honestly, uh, that owl, like the owl. Will Probably just scratch my eyes out. So let's get that's that a good out of the point. Picture. Owls are kind of night satans. All right. So uh, what do you think? Let us know, please. Which of these animals would you do all of those things that we just said to? <laughs> and uh, if you think we shouldn't be fired, <laughs> tell our bosses. Sorry. Moving on. Uh, Kelly, you pay a lot of attention to Nintendo things. I do. Uh, in addition to uh, you know the different fake animals they keep inventing. Uh, there is a new Nintendo machine around the corner. It's the Nintendo NX, but NX, yeah. undoubtedly it's not going to be called that. Yeah. It's going to be called something else. There's a, there's a long history of Nintendo yeah. consoles having different names. So I figured we would, we would run through kind of a, a little bit of a crash course <laughs> in what these household name consoles are were originally called mm -hmm. internally and what they were rumored to be called. Ooh. Uh, starting with, what was this called? Oh, it's the, ja it's the Jam Boy. Uh, the Jam so what Boy. Are, what were we called? We were what called... do you think? It says it... It says it on there. It says the it says the working title on there. The original title for this was Dot Matrix Game. Yeah, that's a strange name. Which is completely genderless, unlike Game Boy. Uh, <laughs> fun fun fact: I actually didn't buy a Game Boy because I thought I couldn't. Wow. No. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Wow. But if it had been called the Dot Matrix, I'd be like, well, I'm not. I'm I'm not in the matrix. I'm not a pro so. or I'm not a programmer. Yeah. yeah that matrix <laughs> if it was, was very if it was confusing. called a dot matrix uh, game, it would you would have fallen asleep before you uh, heard the rest of the title. Because right. That's so a terrible, you know, boring pros name. and cons. Yeah. What else are we going? What's um, the next one? We are swapping out a cable right now because uh, this show is regularly a trash fire. Uh, on that note, there's cable of swap. course the beloved <laughs> Virtual Boy. Get out of the get just get out get out of here. Bye, Zach. Love you. Why do we do this? He's very good. This wasn't my idea. Hey, it's a virtual boy. Hey, virtual boy. Right. Another gendered console. You can tell it's a boy, though, because look at that thing sticking out the bottom there. Oh. But it has two of them. Yeah. Well. Don't you? <laughs> that's, oh, a, that's a lot to deal with. Anyway. Oh, what was this called, Callie? This was called the Virtual Utopia Experience, which then, uh, sounds some, like something you'd see in yeah. Soylent Green. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then they realized that... Uh, Gazing into a red hell is not a utopia. <laughs> also, it just gives you massive migraines immediately. Yeah, yeah, really the opposite of that. It's not not a utopia at all, really. Yeah. It is an experience. I love that wasn't a lie. And it is virtual. virtual so boys two out of three. So they, yeah, they tried. They yeah. did their best. Yeah. Virtual Boy's way ahead of its time. Uh, and then, of course, there's, uh, there's this, old, this old gem. So I, know this one. I just want to contrast this with the virtual utopia experience. This was, the, this was Project Reality. So they just took a complete 180 there, yeah. and they were like, "Look, we're not we're not dealing in virtual anymore. We're going full real. Full real. Yeah. yeah. You know, with that full 3D, the Origi 3D Mario's. Originally, the the console was made of flesh. Yeah. Oh. Which is one of the most real materials available. You had to to reset it. You had to palpate various regions on it, and it was you just feel for lumps. Don't do oh. that. Real scary. Oh no. Uh, well, like, this is also called the Ultra 64. <laughs> like it was um, like actually named the Ultra 64, yeah. wasn't it? And Before it became the Nintendo which 64. Which makes sense because you have you have regular and you get Super and then you get Ultra as the, the logical conclusion. That does make sense. Is yeah. Ultra better than Super? Yes. Yes. Legally, um, according to Street Fighter's naming conventions, <laughs> yes. Uh, it's science. science. Also, like originally, IGN was IGN64.com, so yeah. there was a, it was a N64 rumor site. And of course, there's this thing, which uh, why wouldn't you call this? Don't. Why wouldn't you call it a dolphin? Dolphin. Yes. Um, the most beloved square fish in the ocean. Very purple fish. Yeah. Very, it's, you know, well known for yeah. its inventive. Sailors are frequently saved from drowning by uh, those friendly purple cubes of the sea. <laughs> Can we? Wh why did this thing have a handle? So uh, where are we supposed to take it? You so, know, so, so you could take it for your cool land party where you play Super Mario Sunshine in separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so dolphin, okay, sure, why not? Yeah. It was a, it was a long time ago, and and they they didn't do anything stupid since. Yeah. Uh, there was, of course, was the 
the Wii, which was called something so much cooler. Revolution. Revolution. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they, they did their best. There, there was quite a bit of a revolution. Like, everybody was playing the Wii. Yeah. My dad played the Wii, which yep. is like, he didn't touch Nintendo. So yeah, Revolution. They, they, might, did, they did start a revolution. It might be the most apt name. And I mean, the Wii sold like crazy. And the Wii forced, uh, it sort of forced Microsoft's hand with Kinect and Sony's hand with Move. Mm-hmm. And it really did, like, usher in a new era of gaming, for better or worse. And it forced uh, all of yeah. our hands with that stupid wrist strap. Yeah. No, you don't got to put that on. Yeah, dude. They make you do that. No, it's uncomfortable. You ever been in a Nintendo That's, demo? It's very, very Nintendo, illegal to not wear Nintendo one. Nintendo PR people will stand there and make you put the wrist sure strap that, on. While but you're then you wait until they turn around and you're like, ooh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. No, thank you. Yeah. I like to uh, play it. But of course, <laughs> there's, uh, <laughs> there's the, uh, the Nitro. The Nitro. Well, they're they're not getting, really... getting more aggro there. So this one's interesting because they went more literal with the actual name versus, you know, like virtual utopia experience. Mm-hmm. That's a little more literal. Yeah. This one, Nitro was like more mysterious. And they were like, nah, it's tool, two screens. Two screens. Two yeah. screens. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just do All right. that. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, then, of course, there's uh, the Twilight, Project Twilight, Ooh. Uh, which people probably thought was a Zelda game, but it was not a Zelda game. It was a small machine thought, put I thought pocket. it was one of those vampire books. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's where the boy Before kisses the girl in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, this uh, one sort of had a shininess to it, like yeah. the yeah. vampires I like in the it. sun. I get yeah. it. I get it. This is my favorite. I remember saying for months that the Project Cafe was going to be a panini press. Delicious. Uh, uh, and it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, though you probably could use it to make paninis, yeah, I guess. That. I mean, probably the, have to get an external hard drive for that too, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the Wii U probably not a great name, you know, in that it just kind of sounds. So like a, I feel a like a there. yeah, a lot of a lot of moms go into or, or dads go into GameSpot, uh, GameStop, and um, are like, oh, this is just a peripheral yeah. for my yeah. my Wii and at home, and the, my kid's gonna be so excited, and then you get home, and it's not that. Yeah, the Wii, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of reasons the Wii U super underperformed, but I think its name is partially to blame for it, honestly. Yeah. It's very confusing. It is. It's confusing like, having to explain it to my buddies back home. I'm like, this is a lot of work. I mean, it looks like, this, it looks like the same console. <laughs> I, remember, I remember when they yeah. went, uh, Reggie fils me went with the Wii U on, I think it was Fallon, and even there he had to explain that it was like a new machine. Yeah, yeah which I is mean, like, it seems ooh. like sort of a PS4.5 sort of thing, like it just mm-hmm. isn't, or a PS3 Slim. Like it yeah. just, that's what yeah. it seems like. So. Then there's uh, this old this old chestnut, the Project Infrared, yeah. uh, which of course was the new 3DS, which added infrared uh, capabilities so you could turn off uh, TVs in airports. Yeah. I don't think my that's favorite, true at all. My yep. favorite use. Kid no out. one turns that on though. Um, no. <laughs> so now the thing is, uh, what do you think the NX is gonna be called? Um, so the Nintendo kind of like debuted this new slogan, which is um, like it. What is it? It's there's some, no play. There's like no play like ho- like like it or something. There's no play like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no play like it. So you can see I co- sort of slipped into no, there's no play like home. Yeah. Yeah. So home. Yeah. There's no no. There's no play like home. That's yeah. There's no play yeah. like it. There's so no play are, like. See, it's very confusing. Yeah. Uh, but they did they did switch from like gray and blue the Wii colors to red, which is a little more like. Boom. I'm all yeah. about it. I love I love the old red the old red stuff. Yeah. Red is uh, that color I think of when I think of Nintendo for some reason. Yeah. Maybe it's just Mario. Yeah. Mario. So yeah. you know the even though the their mo- their motto is sort of hard to say the the color's nice. Yeah. I think them. I think it's just I gonna be called just the Nintendo. The, the Nintendo. That would confuse everybody. I Not hope it's me. called red. Just red. <laughs> Nintendo red. Yeah. All right. Well, what do you guys <laughs> think it's gonna be called? I think that uh, the Nintendo Home sounds interesting. I don't know. Maybe just Nintendo. Let us know in the comments or the chat or whatever. I don't care. What are people saying? Are people saying anything on Twitter? Yeah, very nice. You got too many tabs open over there. It's causing a problem. Someone thinks it's, one coat thinks it's going to be called the Super Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, the Ultra Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. God, Ultra Nintendo would be cool. (laughs) Super, the Super Duper Game Box. Yeah. Oh, my favorite. Yeah. Cool. Looking forward to it. The Game Man. I think mm. that would be good. The like, game, the go. Game Boy has grown up into a <laughs> game man. <laughs> it's just a Game Boy with like a furry beard thing on the front. Mm. All right, mm. Callie, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, you can find Callie on Anime Club, mm-hmm. which is uh, it's a um, yeah anime. Yeah, anime. It's an anime club. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, podcast. yeah. It's, a it's a podcast. It's a cool show. We, we <laughs> yeah. talk about the latest so anime. Large and house they constructed in a tree. Yeah. They meet. Very secret. Every full moon. It's just Actually, a show. Actually, you're not allowed in. Sorry. Yeah, it's just. Wow. All right. We're kidding. It's for everyone. <laughs> Anime is for everybody. Yes. All right, Callie. Thank you so much. Thank Bye, you. Greetings, Martin. Welcome back. Here we are. Uh, let me pull up some some images here because it's all just a what kind of images? Damn train wreck. What I got some cool at? pictures oh. of something real stupid looking. Yeah, that sounds bad. Uh, it is something very bad, but it's also great. Uh, I'm going to break the rules right now. Oh, no, what are you uh, doing? we got something real special I want to show off. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. 
Something crazy happened, guys. <laughs> Britney Spears posted Dragon Ball Z fan art on her Instagram. I'm not making this up. This is legit. She did this last night. The 90s have reached their final form. Are you joining? Are you? Oh, you're taking the chair. Yeah. So Britney Spears' kid can draw some Frieza's and some Vegeta's. I got a bold claim here. I can draw better than Britney Spears' kids. I have my folder of Dragon Ball Z fan art from 10th through 11th grade. I got some cool pictures in here. I got I got Super Saiyan trunks. You can see that? It's pretty good. It's way better than this crappy Frieza he drew. The kid's probably like five. I don't care. His mom's Britney Spears. She can afford some anime art lessons. I don't think she can. I think she can. She's a, she got a residency at Vegas. Here's another one I did of, of Trunks. <laughs> I like Trunks a lot. He's my favorite because he's basically John Connor but with a sword. Uh, I've also got, uh, where are they? Here's, a, here's another picture of Trunks. I really pretty much just do Trunks. <laughs> what is, why do you, I don't you know. have so many pictures I of Trunks? I do pictures of Trunks. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, that Trunks doesn't have a I, whole lot of shirts I on. I really like, yeah, sometimes he takes his shirt off because he's hot and he wants to fight one of the androids maybe. Uh, and then of course I, uh, I got a cool picture of Yamcha. I can draw some good Dragon Ball fan art, alright? No, there's never been a cool picture of Yamcha Here's a picture before. of Majin Buu. Why are we still doing this? We're looking this? at my Dragon Ball fan art. I've been waiting for a reason to do this with us. I can draw better than Britney Spears' kid. In your face, Britney Spears' kid. Android uh, 16, looking at you. Neuromance 27 thinks that you have a Trunks fetish. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know, I like Trunks. That's why I wear all those denim jackets. Hey look, it's Mystic Gohan. <laughs> Or Ultimate Gohan, if you want to argue about it. I get in arguments about that kind of stuff. Man, people... Uh, Word789 says that you have great anime drawings. Skills. Thank you! I like to think that I'm even better than Britney Spears' son. You probably Back are. Back to you! It's literally you. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, we do have something really cool I want to show off. Uh, and when I say really cool, I mean it's a curiosity. It's an oddity. Uh, China has unveiled a Chinese game console Ooh. that is going to rival... The, S the Sony consoles, and the Microsoft consoles, and the Nintendo consoles. Uh, I'm going to be honest, it and just looks like they photoshopped things that already exist. It's called the Fuse. You guys ready to take a look at what this looks Don't, like? You're not going to... That's literally just a... That's an Xbox One controller, and that's a PS4. Nah, man. That's yes, a, it is. That, that's is, a, that is a brand new... Nope. That is a brand new console nope. that is going to rival all of them. It's Android-based. Uh, it has a hard drive inside of it. It uses a controller. Uh, it has over... Three different cords that can go mm -hmm. into the back of it. Yeah, you know what else uh, uh, had here's all a that? Photo of the controllers, all the different colors that can come out. Uh, another console that had all of that was the Ouya. Yeah, <laughs> this one is a. Uh, uh, it's coming out in China. Uh, it's got controllers support. All the different controllers you can get. Oh dang! Um, and it's uh, here's what it looks like hanging out. So also one of the games in the background, Hawken is coming to it. Yeah, it's it. got a, it's got a defense grid, I think, or grid or whatever. I think it's a like grid racing. It's one Offensive of those. Offensive grid. I can't read it. It's uh, Hawken's a, coming. Uh, uh, Saints Row, Get Out of Hell is coming. A bunch of mobile games are coming. Uh, one of the interesting things about this though is that up until recently, China had a ban on consoles. Yeah. And um, then they kind of lifted it. They lifted it with the, with the PS4 and the Xbox One. But uh, yeah, I don't know why this exists. And like Ubisoft was there at the reveal uh, showing off games, but they showed off Assassin's Creed Chronicles, which is the, the 2D. Well, it's running an Android, one. you know. Yeah. Uh, I, don't know. I mean, this is curious. These kinds of things do exist. Uh, it's, we're odd, it's odd that we're at a point where there are like, like there are those sort of abandonware consoles or like, you know, portable emulators, which is crazy to think of, that there are devices that you just, that run some kind of weird form of Android. They look like a, a Vita and you pop ROMs in there and it can run them, you know? Yeah. But that like, Bootleg game consoles can exist. I mean, they've always, always had those weird, like those zappy things they sell at the mall that are like, "Hey, it's a fake PlayStation yeah. with an N64 controller." But like, this is coming out and being like, "Hey, I'm a new console called the Fuse." In uh, in the late '90s, I spent a summer at my grandma's house in Poland, and the only video game console they had was this like. 10,000 in one NES thing and I was like oh 10,000 games and then you'd like go down to the bottom and there'd be like 400 variations of Brick Breaker and I'm like I think this is I think this is a lie yeah I don't think they have these licenses at all that's a crazy library yeah. Um, but yeah like I mean this is just such a such a cool oddity I'm actually really excited to get my hands on one of these someday I imagine we'll probably get one in the office and screw around with it but like I mean is this something that people are going to use for using for like legit gaming or is it going to be like a no ROM box, you no. know? It's going to be for it's not gonna be pirating anything. things. It's not going to be anything. It could be something. No, it's not. You it's never know. Not. Sometimes I, things I happen. Not. Like trunks, I've come from the future. Oh. Yeah. Well, all right then. Please um, draw me. <laughs> okay, I'll do some fan art. I've, I've like, totally done fan art. Yeah, we, we have really trunk last year during E3. Yeah. You drew me. I love drawing pictures of you. you. You look like Captain Haddock with glasses. It's very fun to draw you. Um, okay, so X-Men Apocalypse 
is around the corner. It's coming out very soon. And it's got some early buzz. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has a bunch of reviews up. It's currently sitting, last I checked, at a 53%, mm -hmm. which isn't good, and it's not horrible. It's just kind of there. I like, I like X Meh. I think that's, I think that's real clever. I wish I could take credit for that. That was actually somebody else who you will, you will see a little bit from them. Uh, I figure we do what we do. We run through some sound bites. We pulled them from Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen it yet. I'll be totally transparent. I kind of hate those X-Men movies. I wish they'd rebooted that series a long time ago. Uh, it seems like they're just sort of constantly polishing a turd. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd really love to see like a like a X-Men movie that looks like X-Men as opposed to like a bunch of dudes in leather. And like you're like a massive X-Men fan. Yeah, I love X-Men. They're they're my they're my favorite. So uh, that said, I'm I'm like really lukewarm about that. But it's it's nice to hear that some people are uh, are kind of uh, you know kind of into it, not hating it entirely. Yeah. Daniel Krupa uh, reviewed it for us and gave it a seven. Which that's is all right. Good. That's pretty decent. A nice good. Hey, look, it's uh, it's uh, the one of those uh, one of those Starks woke up and uh, she's at that man from uh, Atonement's house. <laughs> the man from Atonement. The man from Atonement. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's take a look here. Uh, Buzzfeed said, like Oscar Isaac in that first scene, Apocalypse loses its humanity early on and never figures out what to replace it with. So that's pretty that's pretty negative. That's kind of harsh, but it's also like, it's not like I wanted to punch this movie in the face, but it didn't have one. Yeah. Which is why I don't review movies, because I just said that. Yeah. Uh, the Verge said, relative to previous X-Men movies or to 2016's other superhero films, Apocalypse feels like a throwback to a less sophisticated age and a faint echo of better series installments. Which is interesting, because it's like, the X-Men series is, is uh, one of the oldest, it's like the, th I'd say the third oldest superhero franchise that's still kind in of... In terms of movies or in terms of In comics? terms of franchise. Oh, wow. Movie, yeah. movie franchises. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, I mean, like, even Batman was... You know, rebooted post X Men. Like the yeah, fact that we yeah. still have, uh, you know, that Hugh Jackman's still hanging around as Wolverine. Yeah. He's been doing that for 16 years, which is insane. And we're getting a new Wolverine movie that's going to be R rated. Like it's that insane cool. that that dude's still playing it. I hope they treat that like a standalone. But uh, yeah. this is just—it feels like they're trying. They're still trying to kind of smooth over that transition. They sort of did like a hard reset on the universe at the end of Days of Future Past. But yeah, I mean, there's just that weird thing of them trying. Like Matthew Vaughn did something really cool, I thought, with First Class, and then they tried to. Like steer it back towards that yeah. original trilogy while not remembering the third movie, but bringing yeah. in the actors. And I, to I mean, me, that's just that sort of a mess. In the first ten minutes of the Wolverine, they're throwing back to stuff that happened in X Men Three, and I'm like, dude, no one liked that. Yeah, just let it go. Just sweep it Move over on. the rug. No one will mind. Uh, moving on, uh, SF Chronicle says this is turning into the season of superheroes battling other superheroes, but X Men Apocalypse is the first one so far to do it right. I mean, it, I guess they I mean, fight, but I mean, I, superheroes. I think that Apocalypse is a super villain. And his henchmen. Wasn't that, you know whose favorite superhero is Apocalypse? Mike Tyson. Yep. That's it's true. That's a true Interviewed fact. him. He says his favorite superhero is Apocalypse, which is weird because that means the end of the world. Yeah. Uh, moving on, USA Today said the latest in the X-Men movie is franchise is just x Men. Wait, is that where you stole it from? Yeah. You I, stole I, it from I, uh, the United States of America today? I stole today? it from America today. Who's yeah. going to steal it tomorrow? Trunks. <laughs> Future Trunks. <laughs> Not Shibi Trunks. It's different, you see. Shiba Trunks? Shibi Trunks. Aww. All right, fine. We'll talk about Dragon Ball Z later. Uh, Film School rejects Brian Singer proves that he no longer has any interesting X-Men stories to tell. Uh, this resonates with me a lot. I feel like Brian Singer has been sort of attached to the franchise since he did it right with it the first time. Mm -hmm. But then he's like, he hasn't really had an amazing track record as a director. Mm -hmm. He has X-Men at all. I mean, to me, The Usual Suspects is the only great movie he's ever done. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's kind of a one trick pony sort of thing. X Men Two is awesome, uh, and then he went to do Superman Returns, and he came back to do Days of Apocalypse, Future. I mean, Apocalypse, yeah, and he did that Valkyrie, he did that World War Two movie, yeah. and yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, Empire says the more f the film harks back to the other X installments, the more you'll wish you were watching those instead. That's a crazy thing that uh, Hollywood keeps trying to fool us with by making new movies. Old movies are really fun, and you can keep watching them as much as you want. Yeah, it's a cool trick. That's true. Variety says, disappointingly succumbs to an exhausting case of a been there, done that itis. Yeah, all right. And uh, Village Voice <laughs> says, what makes X Men Apocalypse so exciting really isn't any one thing, but rather it's cohesion, it's storytelling <clears throat> verve. So, yeah, it sounds like they had fun there. You know, that's, that's positive. Uh, Irish Pirate uh, 2121 says, rebooting the X Men slash Wolverine series multiple times with the same leading cast seems to be the opposite of the way any other major movie series does it. Which I agree. Like, it's very strange. I'd be totally okay if they rebooted it entirely and kept Hugh Jackman. Oh, yeah. He Maybe made him more I mean, of, like, an old man Logan. He's synonymous with that role now. Yeah. Uh, finally, IGN, uh, Daniel Krupa says, Taken as the next chapter in the series, Apocalypse is an undeniably fun and entertainment adventure and does a pretty good job of establishing is Xavier's next class. 
I really hope that they give the series to another director next time around and treat it as like a new like a new adventure, you know? Yeah. I don't know how this one ends. I don't know what they're doing with it, but uh, you know, it'd be cool if, if we just got some some colorful costumes, yellow spandex. Yeah. What if the uh, yeah, that'd be really cool if like the uh, the the post credit scene was just like uh, the director of Milk walking out and being like, "Hey, I'm rebooting the series." That would be really really weird. Yeah. I don't think anyone would expect that. I really, won't. any director coming out and being like, I'm rebooting this series. It's like... Thank you, Gus Van Sant. I don't get it. Is that something from the comics? Nope. <laughs> That's just Rennie Harlan. <laughs> All right. Um, coming up next, uh, VR Graffiti Simulator is exactly what it sounds like. It's really, really cool. I want to get my hands on this so badly. This is coming to HTC Vive. Uh, I think we have some gameplay. Is it gameplay? Is it footage? I don't know what you call it. It's doing spray paint in VR. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. So it seems like it really uses the uh, the same UI as Tilt Brush. Yep. Uh, which we've well, we've all played a bunch of, which is one of the coolest uh, experience slash things you can do in Vive. Yeah. But at Tilt Brush, you're sort of existing in this nebulous uh, black 3D void. Whereas this is awesome. Isn't this Holy amazing? Crap. Yeah. So uh, like I do a lot of I do a lot of digital art. Um, I, oh, I do I do, I do I Photoshop bad YouTube thumbnails yeah. to be honest. Um, but like. Using using digital painting has never been something I've I've really loved because I love using physical media, uh, but I love that this is not so much trying to, like this is trying to simulate it, not just emulate it. Yeah, you yeah, know? that's actually a really good point. Like you look at uh, any kind of drawing tablet or stylus or whatever, like the you know a Wacom tablet or the, the Apple Pencil or whatever. Or the U Draw. Yeah, yeah, the U Draw, that classic. Yeah. Uh, in this case, they're like. This isn't special effects. This isn't like, hey, it's a crazy digital brush. It's like, hey, here's a spray can. Like, this is totally trying to recreate that. Which I feel like, you know, spray paint tools in uh, in Photoshop and you know, paint Paint Studio Max, 3D Painter, whatever. Yeah. I use Photoshop, whatever. Uh, it's always just sort of like, hey, we sort of tried to make a thing, but it's almost more rubber stampy than anything else. This is just like, hey, man. Spray paint. Yeah, Let's and there's a, there's a physicality to holding uh, one of the Vive controllers or something like mm-hmm. Oculus Touch where I can totally imagine like having to actually shake it up and everything. Also, do they have anymore. radio, which I think is really cool. The Cuba Gooding Jr. film? No. Oh, the, never mind. The concept. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> You can listen to music in this yeah. virtual space with spray painting. Man, I, so I sort of, as much as I love this as a, like a creative tool, I also now want Jet Set Radio to come back as a VR game, and I want to have to do this while looking over my shoulder and seeing if the mean Neo cool. Tokyo or cops are coming. It could be that uh, that Mark Echo game that got banned in uh, in Australia, where you oh, have to go around doing because he got up paints. too much. Yeah, that was his problem. Yeah, they don't like you getting up in Australia. Dang, you sit down. Uh, okay, so moving on, um, I want that VR game real bad. I like, I really want to. That would be super cool. Yeah, that's one of those. I mean, I think we it always... comes out next week. It's in it's in Steam Open Beta. It's called. Uh, VR graphics uh, graffiti simulator? No, it's called something. It's it's like I, we probably King should, Spray Graffiti. King Spray. There we go. Yeah. Probably should have written that down because yeah. it would have been good if I did that. But. Yeah, I have it. Was if yeah. someone told me the word was, King Spray, I would have thought something different. That sounds like a a, 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 a Game of Thrones thing. Honestly. Yeah, King sounds spray. like when a Baratheon King Sprayer when a Mar- Baratheon you makes the Baratheon love. with us with the Don't. hose. Nope. How dare you? Don't. Okay. Um, so last week we did a fun thing where we photoshopped video game characters to look like zombies in honor of Dead Island Definitive Collection. Uh, this week I'm doing something that I think is, 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 a, is a great idea, uh, which is uh, photoshopping Pokemon to look like zombies. And I went a little bit overboard with this, I don't like this. and I sort of apologize in advance. Uh, for starters, let's take a look at this guy. I don't like it. Ah, hey, why do you keep doing uh, this? It's Lucario, and he's eating entrails in a junkyard. Why are you uh, so here's the thing: this? is Lucario scares me to begin with. I don't. Th- I think he's. I think he's a weird wolf man, and he's got funny paws. And I don't like it one bit. So I made him real scary, and I just had him just eating eating uh, entrails because that's upsetting. Why? Yeah. Where are you doing this? What do you mean where? Like, are you just angry and drunk at home? Or no, are you doing this in the office? I did it work. But it's so bright. You see me so f- nice. You see me frowning at my desk. It's because I'm making Lucario eat I don't flesh. See this. I don't All right, so then, of course, there's good God. old Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff just coming on down the, the hallway. How nightmarish. This would is that absolutely be? nightmarish. Yeah. Man, now Move I. Move over, Gengar. There's a new scariest little ball in town. <laughs> now I really. Did you know Gengar is the same height as Danny DeVito? We huh. looked it up. It's what true. a cool piece of information <laughs> to have inside your brain. <laughs> this, uh, this beautifully complex uh, just web of. Stuff. 
But this looks like a this looks like PT, and I don't I don't like it. Yeah, I really, I'm really happy it. with this. I'm gonna make that my wallpaper, and then scare myself, and have to change <laughs> into something re like regular Jigglypuff. And this one, I'm real proud of. Let's get the, get get rid of that that picture of us in the corner. I don't like that. Buy us. Can we move? Can we get rid of us? No, we're there forever. Thank you. All right, this one I'm real. I really like this. This is scary. Oh, it's God. scary, Evie. I just love it. I love zombie Evie as just this undead. And it's in the wall. Pomeranian. Where did you get the picture of the wall from? The internet. Oh. I just I made a. I, I made a cool picture. I did. I photoshopped it all together. I don't like. Man, we could make a really messed up Pokemon Snap now. Yeah, I kind of love like a cross between like Zombie U and Pokemon and, Snap. Yeah. Yeah. Or like Fatal Frame of Pokemon Snap. Yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Thank you, Pokemon. Uh, anyway, uh, if you would like to contribute some uh, some zombie photoshops, uh, I'll actually be gone next week, I think. Am I <gasps> gone next week? You are gone yeah, next I'm week. gone next week. I'm going far away, but Brian will be back. So you should Photoshop Zombie Brian and you should send it to up at noon at IGN.com. Oh, no, Zombie Brian. Thank you, Dead Island, for sponsoring the show and giving me an excuse to make a picture of a scary Eevee eating a man's arm in a broken wall. And for giving me nightmares. Yep. All right, uh, we played a fun thing. We played 8-Bit Uncharted 4 in Bullet Time. What? It's a whole different game. Let's take a look. Hey, everybody. Max and Zach here. We were playing the Up at Noon Challenge. Uncharted 4 just came out. A lot of you don't realize this, but it is an 8-bit game. That's right. They decided to go for a retro approach this time around. Yeah. Uh, so, like... No spoilers here. This is the very beginning of the game. If you're going to pick it up, you're not missing much. This is still like pre-tutorial stuff. True. true. Uh, but I beat the game, and you can unlock some crazy filters that let you make it look all funny and silly and sound real bad. So let's take a look at so this hot new Game yeah, Boy Color game. Here's the opening boat level in 8-bit. Blades of Steel. There's no way that voice acting would have sounded this good in 8-bit audio. I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. I like that it's like peaking, though. That's pretty funny. It really does look like a Game Boy Color game. It's kind of awesome. Coming soon to Neo Geo Pocket. Yeah. Look at those terrifying waves in the background. You can't even tell they're in a boat. No. <laughs> this, this car is awful. Here we go. How come that's not an 8-bit? <laughs> That's amazing, dude. Isn't this great? <laughs> yeah, that looks really cool. Oh, man. Oh, Look at that. Swear. Look out for those other blobs. Oh, no, the blobs are coming after me. <laughs> nice. Also, we've got zero gravity and... Uh, yeah, I'm not really like, sure how how much like zero gravity is impacting how you're playing. But well, so it makes enemies fly off, but you can't really see because yeah. we're in the fog in 8-bit. Sure. But it, he's also instructing you to to pilot towards an island, and like, is that it? That must be it. There. I think that's the yeah, island. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is so cool. Yeah. I like. I kind of want to play the whole game like this. And I do like, not. Yeah. Look at those men flying. I like around how they everywhere. go flying off. That's pretty great. Can we get to the island? The of eight bit. I wish that they. Well, I mean, obviously this is a lot of extra work, but so like, it would have been so great to have the cinema cinematics be like eight bit cinematics. Oh, that would have been cool. It's just like bleeps and bloops for voices and then like text at the bottom. What are you saying to me? Watch out for the mines. Mimes? Yeah. Limes? Boom. So that's this, I think that's the zero gravity yeah, one. Yeah, those stuff. boats are flying way further off the water than they do. I can't tell the... how big the boats are. This is so weird. Yeah. Also, you're just driving in circles. You know, we could also uh, do something else here, uh -oh. which is uh, let's let's get real weird. Let's make this a rainbow fun land. Whee! Rainbow boats! Shouldn't have taken all that E before we got this boat. <laughs> Come on. Oh. His hair looks so weird when it's wet. Yeah, his hair uh, holds together amazingly well in this game. He uses a lot of products. Look at that rainbow boat. Oh no, boat. it's a rain boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, I like the weird modifiers they put on here. Go on, get out of the water. Oh no, my purple it boat. It looks like it's only... Like environments that are all yeah. psychedelic. Put a different filter on there. Let's see what else we got. This one's real good. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that's crazy, man. You know who loves this game mode? Sam Claiborne. Yep, game yeah. facts. Y'all. Uh, I just realized that that's a joke that none of you get, but Sam sends these emails out for events that are all in uh, ASCII, so... You say ASCII? -I? Yeah. Oh, how say, do you say it? I say ASCII. ASCII? Yeah. I mean, that's fine, too. That's like game facts and game FAQs. I can't actually see what I'm... 
I'm pretty sure you just blew that boat up. Is it? Did it blow up? Yeah. Uh oh, more, shoot boats. more dudes. Also, I think I'm playing this on hard mode right now. Yeah. Based on how often it goes from mostly gray and black to like. This looks like a really crummy version of the Matrix. Crum <laughs> crummy is a word I don't usually associate with the Matrix. I mean, I just I mean more, more because crummy is like. What an odd word, man. Pick a different, pick a different filter. All right. We got one minute left. One more. Let's do a really silly one. Uh, uh, let's do. We did 8 bit. Some of these are stupid. Yeah. Do the cell shaded one. Yeah, let's check that out. Cell shaded. Oh, Dude, it's that is awesome. Isn't that great? Hold on. Let me try something. All right. Let's see how this goes. Yep. Holy cow. This is a completely different game. Yep. That's amazing, dude. I love how the music slows down, too. Well, it's slow down 8-bit. Yeah. Kill those men. I'm trying. It's very slow. Damn it. I have to wait three minutes for him to pop back up. <laughs> this Let's Play will be over by the time they jump back up. All right, guys. Come on out. There we go. Oh, no. Shoot him. Boom. God, I would seriously consider playing this whole game in uh, cell shaded. It looks very Also, look cool. at that dude just like floating around there. <laughs> <laughs> that man's fine. He's fine. All right. So That's this it. concludes Uncharted 4, the Borderlands edition. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I'm sorry about anything we did wrong. The end. Welcome back. Why did it the show? Why did it just get really cool right at the end, and then you had to come back to us? I wanted to see you k keep killing those pirates. Yeah, it was really tough to jump around that game because Zach uh, hasn't played it. Didn't want to have anything spoiled. Oh, so he didn't want to know that the jeep dies. He's being a baby. Or that uh, he's, he just tripped over a camera a little bit. He does that sometimes. <laughs> Great producer. Real good. Real good guy. Come on out. How are you not on, on camera one? yet? Get out of here. Yeah, Stop you're it. great. You're great Dusty. on camera, Zach. Good, good job there. Uh, I have some more uh, more anime fan art I'd like to show off. <clears throat> That's better than Britney Spears' kids' anime fan art. Brian, come back. <laughs> Brian will be back so shortly, and you can hang out with him. You have a great time without me. All you guys at home who hate me, <laughs> you have a great time too, and I'll just leave. <laughs> Check out, uh, here's a picture of Vegeta, uh, and he says he wants a cigarette. God, I need a cigarette, Kakarot. I have a voice like this because I'm an old woman. Uh, and then I, I did, uh, here's a, a picture of... Um, He's a he's a baby Goku, but he's having a nice a nice Mountain Dew. That is yeah. That's just you. No, don't he's, you have that at, tattoo on your body? Uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, then then of course there's uh, there's there's Krillin, little Charlie Brown Krillin. You see it? Look at that. Oh, he looks all chubby. All I, I got cute. was a Dragon Ball. <laughs> uh, and then there's uh, this uh, Deadpool. He's, not, ahead, he's a, not a member of the Dragon see, Ball. See, I like Deadpool before universe. he was cool, and I drew him. Badly, in 2002. He has a cool bulge. Yeah, he, d he does have a lot of bulge. And then I have a stormtrooper. Come on. Who wore it better? <laughs> what do you want? Look. Look at how realistic it is. Show it. He's got very few pictures. Wow, that's a great picture. Look, sir, great art. Look look at that. It's all. It's, it's real real good. So see, you've got the lines and the pauldrons. and. Anyway, thanks for watching my show. <laughs> uh, Hideo Kojima is making a new video game. We knew this. Yeah. We got Kojima Productions. They got the cool new logo yeah. uh, of the skeleton knight from the future. He's also, he hinted that the knight's body is done and it will surprise us. So I don't know what that means. I don't know what kind of a body that means. So he gave us a, a, a big, big chunk Prepare of information. Yourself. Prepare yourself. I won't say that it's an open world title, <gasps> but those that enjoy playing today's AAA titles such as The Division and Uncharted will be able to play it smoothly. <laughs> All right. So let's, is that, is there more? <laughs> the genre is action. Okay. That was, Are you hyped? That's, is that the end? Hideo Kojima's new game sounds, sounds nuts. Okay, so let's, let's, let's really unpack this. Um, he won't say it's open world, which means it might be. And it's gonna be like The Division and Uncharted so it's going to star violent men, and it will have action. I think this game is going to be really good. <laughs> I think it's just serious I mean, contender for Game of the Year. Yeah. Whatever year it winds up coming out, 
I don't need to hear anything else. I think I'm just going to go on media blackout until it's out. I absolutely need I to hear something else. I think I know all else. I need to know. No, I you think don't. everything I know about this untitled Hideo Kojima game sounds fantastic. Uh, I have one more scoop to give you. It's going to be available on a disc. Dude, as well spoilers! As digitally. Come on! Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't... Can I pre-order it yet? Do you think... Probably. Can I pre-order <laughs> this, this game? <laughs> I mean, probably we all might be dead by 2018, 2019. I think I'm just going to start sending money via PayPal to just random people and hope that one of them's Kojima. Just maybe that'll work. What? <laughs> I what? Just, I'll just I leave like money idea. outside and be like, I just hope someone knows who to give that for that mysterious game that has no name or release date or yeah, incredible anything. Do you think it's gonna? Okay, this is an actual question. Do you think it's gonna? Are you gonna be using guns or are you gonna be using melees? I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> You just give like the most knowing like smirk. You're like, he doesn't know. He, he doesn't know anything about this game. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'd I'd be uh, I'd be I wouldn't surprise me if it's a little bit of both. Yep. You know, what about a knight that just has a gun? How cool would that game be? You a go back gun? to Middle Ages and you just have a gun. That sounds great. Just have one regular gun, like a, just a, a crappy rifle, like not even a good gun. But what if it's a comedy like the hit Martin Lawrence film Black Knight? Yeah. yeah. What if? Yeah, that was pretty cool, right? All right, so anyway, moving on. Uh, another person who's got something cool in the works uh, that didn't really expect. Seth MacFarlane, creator of Family Guy, is launching a new sci-fi show on Fox that's going to be live action. Mm -hmm. It's going to be dramedy. It's going to be, again, science fiction. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's, uh, and it follows the adventures of a ship called the Orville, which is uh, a not-so-top-of-the-line exploratory ship in Earth's interstellar fleet. Um, so it almost sounds like a firefly e show, but with less action and more comedy. Like I mean, I think that the fact that they're not like, this is a comedy from Seth MacFarlane shows that it's not a comedy. Yeah. Because his name is synonymous with that. But, like, the dude's got plenty of other interests. You know, he's a huge nerd. I think he's smart as hell. Yeah. Uh, he helped get that uh, the new Cosmos off the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So that's, I mean, one of the main things is the dude loves space. Yeah. So he's not, he's not like a, a fake space boy. As one of those fake space boys. Yeah, I just I have uh, I just use the the star emojis a lot. I'm yeah. not really. I don't know. Really you don't know, know what they name? Actual space. Uh, yeah, I'm a little. I don't even like to look at the sky at night. It's too scary. It is very scary. But like yeah. uh, Ted, those Ted movies were super popular. Made a ton of money. Those Ted merchandise is all over Japan, which is super strange. Yeah, in Japan they love Ted. Which is which is weird. Yeah. I don't get it. Uh, and then he made A Million Days to Die in the West, which I was super excited about because I love westerns and I love Blazing Saddles and I like the trailer. And that movie was very bad. Oh, I'm sorry. So I was slightly burned by that. Um, but I, I, I'm I'm a fan of sort of uh, concept weird comedy dramas yeah. and going out there. And I like the idea that we're getting this and then we're getting um, Ken Levine is helming a Twilight Zone reboot interactive thing. Yeah. The creator of uh, Bioshock. So I'm all for just sort of weird stuff appearing on TV. Especially if this is on a network that's not like CBS. Like this would be, or it's Fox, I guess. Yeah. Which is well, not like see CBS. see what happens, you know. Yeah. Uh, I bet, I mean, Seth MacFarlane's definitely proven himself as a guy who can make stuff that people seem to enjoy. And uh, he makes filthy amounts of money. Yeah, makes a lot of money. So that means that he is right, and we should respect him. Nope. No. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a cool man, though. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Doom is coming out soon, and in celebration of Doom, they made it out of clay. I don't know why that's a sentence. Was that a dreidel, dreidel, uh, dreidel? Yeah, there's a, I, sort of? I don't mm. know. There's this Doom Claymation video that showed up on uh, on YouTube. Uh, this is by Clay Cat, I think. This is look at this. Oh, oh, a little kitty. He's gonna run around. He's gonna do some stuff. Uh, oh, it's just like Doom. Oh, oh this is awesome. Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. Yep. yep. You didn't think it was cool, no, but it is. I didn't think it was gonna be cool at all. Oh, this looks dumb. like a like a tool video. Or Gumby. Or Gumby. Gunby. Gunby is back. Um, oh, this looks Take awesome. Take that prickle. Get also, out of the way, goo. So the way we just saw. Oh my Go god. Go to hell, blockheads. <laughs> you know a lot of characters I in really, Gumby. I really. I watched so much Gumby. I don't know why. I hated that show. Are they in the same cinematic universe as Davy and Goliath? Uh, no. Okay. Just, just. But this is like. Um. God, this is so cool. Also, I, love that it's I just would. A little bit goofy looking. You know? Yeah. Like in the way that we just saw the cool filters that you guys were playing with in Uncharted Four, I would love for Doom to have filters, unlockable filters like this, to be able to play the game looking like this or play a level. Oh man. Look at it, it's a Baron of Hell. Yeah. Oh, I love the even flashback. Oh, now it's arm. That is so cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm totally. Oh. Yeah. Now we just want some. Are, are you just like I'm totally gonna play this game? Like, yeah. <laughs> that I'm like oh I can't. But in the same way that like. Uh, uh, the like yarn Yoshi and the Clay Kirby yeah. game that came out recently. Like I love when things look tactile. Yeah, completely. There, I mean, there this was, is obviously tactile. There was a whole serious uh, whole period when 
claymation games was like the next big thing. It was kind yeah, of in that's that same, right. Like the era of like Primal Rage and Mortal Kombat. Stuff was, like Lauren Lanning's yeah. games, like Odd World, always had that claymation yeah, look to it. And there was Clay Fighter, uh, and there was uh, God, was it just Clay Fighter sixty three? There third? was another one that was not Clay Fighter, but it was like. You, you played as like a good clay man, it was like clay creatures or some crap. Oh, it was a, not good. Ah, ah. These games were pretty much rarely good, but I kind of <laughs> hope that we get like a renaissance of like claymation games because we're at a point where making that stuff happen in, in video games and game engines is totally doable. Hey, someone can make it in Dreams. Wow, yeah. Somebody make a cool game about Doom and Dreams. <laughs> or just whatever, I don't care. Just, just make, make something a game. Just, oh. Somebody make something. This is so violent. This good is God. very violent. Can we show this? I don't know. Man, that's neat. <laughs> All right, Zach says yeah, yes. We got a thumbs up. I was told. Oh, ah. ah. I like that it's just. It's not even like a Doom Let's Play. It's just like kind of a weird adventure. Doom Supercut. Yeah, yeah it totally. Like it kind of tells a story. Or... Is that the monolith? Don't do it. He's, don't do don't it. Don't do it. It's a trick. Oh, I forgot that he was a cat. Watch out, Doom Cat. Oh, dang. Don't do it. Come on. What is it? It's the monolith from 2001. Oh, oh no, no, it's the it's the elevator. <laughs> comes the cyber demon. Zach Ryan rides the elevator. Yeah. Pretty cool. Oh no, the kitty's gonna die. Oh, rip. Well, it's fine. Wow. That was really cool. Damn, I really like that. I like so, that a lot too. Yeah. Uh, shout out to that? Clay Cat. That's is Clay Cat a person? A Clay Cat is a know? cat made of clay. And also, oh. I think, a YouTube channel. So oh. there's that. Well, that's really cool. Uh, here's the dumbest thing uh, there's a Flaming Lips uh, X Men <sighs> crossover. If you're unfamiliar, Flaming Lips. Or a band from the 90s. They, they, still did, they did that song. Of course they're still <laughs> of around. Cor of course, Zach. They like, nope. Yeah. They're, they're, they're actually, they're, 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 I mean, they're fine. They're all right. <laughs> they're also just like the most totally disparate band from the X-Men possible. What do they have to do with the X-Men? They're weird. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, they showed up in, uh, yeah, they're, they're on this, uh, hold on. Let me open the, the damn picture on this. Is that Wayne with Wolverine? Wayne uh -huh. Vereen? Why would you? Why would you make this? How did this happen? It seems very strange. Anyone. So this, this is this is a tie-in with the uh, with the X Men ninety two series, which is basically continuing the adventures of the animated series. Uh, the Flaming Lips, and uh, don't they also say that like Zach who else is in there? What other crappy old band is in there? I don't know. There's some other band. It's like not my show. Uh, I don't know the Spin Doctors or something. Do in you there. think Yoshimi and or the Pink Robots are going to be? Probably in there? not. I hope so. Uh, I really. You hope know the so. Sentinels were Pink Robots. That's true. Yeah. You know Yoshimi battled one Pink Robot who's better than all the rust, and his name was Nimrod. It's not oh, true. Remember Nimrod? Nimrod is great. It's a weird know. name to name your robot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I don't know. This is just. Um, I mean, we're telling you about it because it's really weird, and we thought maybe you'd want to know. What band would you want to see in X Men? Like, what if you could see any band show up in X Men? Would you want Kanye to show up in X Men? I, would, I want Kanye to show up in everything. I say this a lot, and I don't know if it's actually happening, but at one point Kanye was attached to be the creative director of the Jetsons film. That would have been so. I really weird want that to happen. So cool. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, I'd like it if Andrew W K showed up in X Men. I think that would work. But only if he washes his pants. His pants are fine. No, he's got blood and like snot That's, all over him. He's got blood on his shirt. Yeah, well, he's washed everything. Oh, fine. He just needs to take a bath. Okay, uh, Kevin Smith is making a new film that's about his daughter and Johnny Depp's daughter, and they work in a store. It's called Yoga Hosers. Is it a uh, Canadian, Canadian thing? I don't know. It's uh, it's it's these two girls are named Colleen. I'm really unclear why this is subtitled. Also, why? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, roll with it. It's totally fine. Sure, but basically, this is a uh, yeah. This is a Harley Quinn Smith and uh, Johnny Depp Jr. or whatever her name is, and fake <laughs> Justin Bieber. Uh, and they work in a maple syrup store, and then they have to fight a a, a a bratwurst Nazi, and it's sort of a horror comedy, and they're friends. This looks so and it's cheap. Yeah, and there's that's uh, that's Johnny Depp again. That's Johnny in Depp his, in, uh, he was in that same makeup in uh, that, in Johnny Tusk. Depp. Yeah. Tusk was a very bad movie. What are they doing? I don't like, know. And there's this small man who's a little... Uh, he's a. Yeah. This looks terrible. This looks like a Nickelodeon movie, I'm going to be honest. Like, this looks like Big Meanie. Yeah, a little bit, honestly. This looks well, like Harriet the Spy it's the same after she drops out of school or It's whatever. the same cinematographer as Good Burger? Good God. And no, they're doing Good yoga. Burger. There's Justin Long. Oh, there's Buster from Rest of Development. Yeah. So, I mean, like... <sighs> What? Man, I don't. I really like uh, Clerks and Chasing <sighs> Amy and Dogma, and I don't want to see any of this. Yeah, <sighs> stop it. Just, Why are we still on uh, this? That's 
I don't know if I want to see this film. I don't. I would like to see a different film, I think. I think I will not watch that film. What about the what, would, what about you? <laughs> will you watch this film? Who knows? Um, we got this cool thing. There's a Kickstarter that showed up for Star Wars Skulls. Okay, this is actually cool. This is actually something I'm excited about. Let me pull this, this up here. This is, uh, this is a very exciting thing that everyone should care about. Oh, man. Uh, you know who doesn't want to see this movie? Everyone in the comments. Okay. So, yeah, maybe this isn't for us. Maybe this is for, like, teenage girls, and maybe they'll love it. Who knows? Tiger that's... Groovy says, someone stop Kevin Smith. So, no, that's actually... Let's, let's, let's break this down. Yeah. Like, Kevin Smith is making a movie... I'm assuming his daughter and Johnny Depp's daughter had some input on, like, what they want to see in it. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Smith used to make movies with his pals that were, like, like Jane Silent Bob. I saw that when I was, like, 14, and I loved it. And yeah, like, totally. It was totally a movie for teenage boys of all ages, I guess. Maybe this is going to be, like, a whole new generation's Jane Silent Bob. Like... It's, there's a thing that we have trouble processing, which is when something isn't for us. Yeah. Like this horrible minion. Oh, a minion? The minion is not for me. It's not even mine. The minion's gone. He's going to start an electrical fire. The minion belongs to Steve, but it's like, of course I think the minion sucks. I'm an adult man. <laughs> Why would I go see the minions movies? Yeah. I don't have kids. But it's also if something brings someone else happiness, then yeah. that's really all that matters. What kind of monster would try to prevent other people from having a good time? Uh, the Dean. Yeah, the damn Dean. He's always shutting down our parties. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He gave I, me an F for school. You know what adjective I use to describe him? Crusty. Crusty old Dean. Right, right, right. <laughs> okay, uh, finally, we got one thing really quick. Uh, there is a 3D printing company called 3D Kitbash, and they launched a Kickstarter. Uh, I just kicked over the surge protector. <laughs> Everything's fine. They launched a Kickstarter that'll probably get... Uh, Cease and desisted real fast. Nah, that's fine. Uh, and it's about Star Wars animal skulls that are all sort of bootleg. Let's let's take a look. You've got second shooter. Looks a certain amount oh. like Greedo. Yeah. There's sleeping bag, which is a tauntaun. There's advertisement. <laughs> support IGN. There's space yeti, which is very on the nose. Yeah. It's a wampa. Uh, lizard hunter boss. Yeah. Dog man. It's a Jamorian. Jamorian charge. Dog man. It's a Jamorian charge. That's he's really kinda, weird. He's like a guard dog. That's odd. I don't think they're dogs. I think it's fine. Major Domo. Yeah. Monkey Lizard. Cool. So if you want to support that, go check that out. That's uh, it's on the internet, and it's you get 3D printed skulls from the from space. Yes. That are cool. not licensed by Lucasfilm LLC or Disney. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Uh, anyway, tomorrow we're gonna be playing Doom on IGN Plays Live. I think I'm actually on board with that. Are you doing that? Or you... I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm not doing it. We're doomed. Uh, yeah, real stupid. Uh, yeah, but that'll be cool. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Uh, Marty, thank you so much for helping out. Yeah, like, my seriously, pleasure. This, you're, I, you're a wonderful pal. And, oh, uh, and uh, yeah, and we're going we're gonna to go hang out. We're going to have a great time. I hope you uh, have fun in Germany. Yeah, I'm going to Germany, and then I'm going to Greece. I'm going there for a wedding and sort of a vacation. Uh, and I, uh, I can't wait to see you guys when I get back. And uh, Brian will be taking over next week. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, you can catch me and Marty on Podcast Beyond every week. That's an uh, audio program about PlayStation also games. Also videos. Yes, also videos. True story. Thank you for watching. We love you. Good night. Mwah. Yeah. Uh.